Hey everybody, today is the official release of Plasticity 1.4. It's a really exciting release, I think, because we got to incorporate uh, the two most requested features ever by our users ever since Plasticity 1.0 came out, which is to have the ability to have more precise dimensions and measurement annotations when making uh, traditional mechanical CAD models. So let me walk you through some of the exciting new features in this release. So let's focus first on measurements. Measurements is the ability to create an annotation that uh, shows a distance in directly with your 3D models. So in the command palette, there is a measure command, and the key binding is control equals. So I'll just get started. Now, all you need to do is run the command. And typically, you'll click two points, a measurement from somewhere to somewhere, and then uh, you will draw out your measurement uh, to, to make a axis align measurement. So here we're measuring a distance along Y and we can place it uh, you know, along X or if we wanted to place it in a different axis, for example, we could snap the construction plane or snap the view to a side view and then we can bring up the measurement in, in Z. But I'll just put it here. Uh, as an example, and the now normally you will click on two points, but if you just click on um, the middle of an edge, like not a snap point, like the midpoint or like end point, midpoint, three quarters, etc., you can just dimension an edge directly by clicking on it, and you can also dimension any two arbitrary points um, by, for example, clicking here and here. And it can be either axis aligned, here we're measuring a distance along x, and here we're measuring a distance along y, or uh, if you simply right click rather than left click, it will make a point to point measurement between these two points. Now, one of the exciting things about uh, the way that I've implemented measurements in Blasticity is that these are not static textual annotations, they update in real time. So, for example, if I offset this face, you can see that these, this number is changing. So let me add a few more measurements just so we have a sense of how this body is oriented in space physically. So I'll add a measurement from here to here. I want it to be axis aligned, so I'm gonna click the left mouse button. Uh, we can see that it's 65 millimeters along Y in that direction. I'll add one more, let's say from here to here. I'll put this out here. Um, and let's see, uh, I will add a measurement from this cylinder down to this edge. And sometimes, you know, because we're working in three dimensions, it, sometimes we need to be more specific about what axis we exactly want to measure. So for example, I'm going to go into this plane, and so we will measure the Z axis directly. And uh, so we'll measure the Z the center of the cylinder to this bottom edge, and I'll also measure um, the distance from this edge to the center of the cylinder. And we'll just put this out here. Now, you'll notice that for each of these measurements, we have uh, an entry in the outliner on the left. Um, a nice thing about the measurement system in Plasticity is that measurements are just like any other object. You can show and hide them individually uh, or as a group. You can 
um, let's see, uh, hide and unhide all measurements at once. You can add measurements to a group, perhaps uh, you know, with the objects that they that they represent. Um, so, for example, maybe we'll put this object in a group. I'll nest this group, and the measurements associated with that, I'm going to move into this group with it. And so we can uh, quickly show and hide all measurements related to a given object or in a group. Um, and you can have you know, any kind of hierarchy there. Uh, so it's pretty easy to manage having a few hundred measurements in a plasticity document if you need to. So the measurement command allows you to create these annotations that uh, you can easily see the physical dimensions of your object. Complementing that, there is a new dimension command that allows you to rapidly and conveniently change these dimensions of your object. So the dimension command is uh, in the command palette under dimension, and the key binding is equal. And let me just show you a few examples of how it's used. If I select this radial face, uh, this cylindrical face, and I type equals, it will show me the actual current value of the cylinder's diameter. And if I want to change it, I can just change it to 5, for example. Um, now, this cylinder is supposed to be the same size. So I'm going to select this cylinder, and I can type equals 5 if I want, but I can also select this cylinder and then select the cylinder that I know is correct as the last in the selection. And if I type equals, and I just type enter again, now both cylinders will have exactly the same size. So what the, so just to make that super clear what's going on, if I have uh, three random circles, and I want them all to have the same radius, let's say I want them all to have the radius of this smaller circle, I can just type equal enter. If I want them all to have a specific radius, I can just type that in and type enter. Now similarly, if I have a rectangle, I can type equals and change the dimension of the rectangle at any point. And furthermore, uh, we can do this for a cube, uh, a box. I can update the measurements of the box at any point. This box does not need to be axis aligned. For example, we can always just change the measurements whenever we want. Uh, the same is true for cylinders. The same is true for spheres. So basic primitives like rectangles and circles and spheres and cylinders and boxes as well as uh, their face counterparts can easily be dimensioned at any point, not just during construction. Now, often though you're working with situations that are not quite so uh, simple, you're not just working with a primitive, you have a real body like this. So the dimension command is still really useful in this case. So for example, if you select this face right now, and I just run the dimension command, it will find the opposite planar face if one exists, and we can use that to set the distance from that opposite planar face. So it shouldn't be 17.5, it should be 20, for example. And now just to show you again, there is a 20 millimeter distance between these two faces. Now, sometimes you want to use the opposite planar face, like for example, this uh, should be 45 millimeters, but other times you don't want to use the opposite planar face, you want to use this very specific face. So let's say I want the distance from this face to this face to be a different distance. So first we select a reference plane, a reference face, and then we select the face that we want to move and we type equals, it's 75. If I type 80, now it'll be 80, okay? And I'm undoing that real quick. Now, it's not just planar faces that you can do this with. You can do this with cylindrical faces. So this cylinder, which we know is five millimeters now, it's not centered in this body at all. Now we know that this is uh, 20. So one thing that we can do is we can select this reference face and then select the cylinder, type equals, type 10, and now this is vertically centered. Now similarly, if we select this face and we know that, and we select this face, I can set the distance to be 10, and this now is correctly in position. Now I can do the same thing with both faces selected. So for example, if I select this as the reference plane and select this face, I can do 10, and similar here, oops, 10, 
and now they're exactly in the same. So generalizing a bit from previous examples, if I want these two faces to be perfectly aligned, I can select these two faces, so relative to this face, let's say. So I can select these two faces, and then type equal, and then type enter, and now they're both the same distance from this face. So you can set an explicit distance, for example, 80, or you don't have to set an explicit distance. You can just use a sort of reference, uh, the, the last thing that you have selected, to sort of inherit that value equally. And so you can use that, as we saw with circles, to rapidly dimension three different circles, but you can also use that with dimensioning to make alignments. So for example, I'll make a couple different cylindrical holes here. Um, I'll just do this. So I want them all to be five millimeters, okay? Equal enter. I want them all to be uh, the same distance from this face, let's say. Uh, let's say I want them to actually be rel equal to this one, equal enter, right? So you can um, rapidly create dimensions almost, almost like two-dimensional sketch constraints, but you can do it directly in your three-dimensional body. And like I said, all of these measurement annotations will be updating in real time as you do this, right? So you can see these numbers changing in real time. Beyond the dimension and measurement commands, there are a bunch of other new features in this release that should make working with plasticity even more convenient. There's support for the space mouse, and you can easily uh, configure your preferences uh, in the preference panel directly. Uh, space mouse support is currently Windows and Mac only. Linux will come uh, somewhat soon. Um, there are a bunch of new 2D planar curve construction commands uh, and tools. So as a simple example, it's possible to make, um, uh, to easily make uh, tangent circles that are tangent to two different curves. Um, you can very easily construct um, lines that are uh, perpendicular to uh, arbitrary splines. Um, you can, um, let's see, um, match arbitrary two-dimensional spline curves at points of tangency, for example, um, just to make clear what's going on here. So a lot of like traditional um, 2D mechanical CAD sketching that you uh, would do in a constraint-based system is really easy to do with Plasticity's snapping system. And one minor thing that is a particular favorite of mine that works um, for uh, polylines as well as arbitrary splines, so I'm just going to join these and put on construction points, the offset um, uh, tool, which normally you use to, for example, offset two-dimensional curves. The offset tool has been given the ability to offset vertexes, vertices. So you can offset a vertex a fixed distance from another vertex, and that works on arbitrary spine, splines to do arc length distances. So you can make very interesting constructions. So for example, with a bridge curve, you know, you can make very simple um, chordal length uh, bridge curves in three dimensions. And so there's just a ton of new tools and enhancements to the outliner and all sorts of great stuff. So um, if you're doing more precise mechanical CAD style work and want the efficiency of, and creativity of the plasticity workflow, but still need these more precise measurement tools, Plasticity 1.4 really has it 